Hey guys, welcome back to topic 1.3 um, on membrane structure. So let's get going. Um, cell membrane is a very thin, um, 8 nanometers wide barrier that separates the living cell from its non-living surroundings. So its function is that it regulates slash controls the passage of molecules and ions in and out of the cell because it is selectively permeable, allowing substances to cross more easily than others. Here's a little picture. But um, the history of the membrane model in science and models a hypothesis that describes the scientific structure of a pr or process. And since they are hypothes hypotheses, all models should be considered provisional, currently accepted but likely changed with new evidence. Um, models to explain the structure of new s of cell membranes were developed long before membranes were first seen with electron microscopes in 1950. In 1895. Charles Overton hypothesized that membranes are made of lipids because the substances that devolve in the lipids enter the cell faster than those insoluble in lipids. Um, okay, so 1952, using artificial membranes, Gorder and Grendel reasoned that that cell membranes must be a phospholipid bilayer, um, two layers thick, and that hydrophobic fatty acid tails um, are sheltered from water while the hydrophilic phosphate group's heads interact with the water. So, what evidence led to the two scientists um, in this conclusion? When the phospholipids were arrayed, arranged in a monolayer, the area that they occupied was two times larger than the calculated area of the cell. So, some more history. So, the problem with um, Gorder and Grendel's model is that actual membranes adhere more strongly to water than do official artificial membranes composed of um, only phospholipids. Also, despite being thin, membranes are a very effective barrier to movement to, of substances. So one hypothesis was that proteins on the surface increased adhesion, and in 1935, the Davison and Danielli proposed that the phospholipid bilayer is sandwiched between sheets of inner and outer layers of globular proteins, which they called the sandwich model. So here's the protein the hydrophobic zone, the hydrophilic zone, um, and then the hydrophobic, oh, hydrophilic zone again. So the evidence is that chemical analysis of red blood cells um, membranes confirmed the presence of proteins as well as lipids. So additional f support from this model came from early images of cells from electron micrographs. And so proteins appear dark in electron micrographs where phospholipids appear light. And after staining the cells, scientists noticed two thin, dark, um, separate bands separated by light by a light region, which they inter interpreted as a single layer of protein. This railroad track appearance of a, mem of a membrane suggested that the Davison Danielli's sandwich model was accurate. And to further investigate um, some of these problems with the model, not all membranes look the same. They differed in thickness and appearance when stained, as well as the percentage of proteins um, to lipids in biochemical tests. So the experiments showed that the membrane proteins are actually not very soluble in water. They are ampipathic. Um, they contain both, both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. Therefore, if they were only located um, at the surface of the membrane as proposed by the sandwich model, then the hydrophobic regions would be in contact with water. We know from chemistry that that is very unlikely. So the history of membrane models. In 1972, Singer and Nicholson presented a revised model, which they called a fluid mosaic model. So a membrane is a fluid structure with proteins embedded within and attached and attached to a double layer of phospholipids. So phospholipid bilayer, hydro, hydrophilic region of protein, hydrophobic um, region of protein. And so the hydrophilic regions of PTNs and phospholipids are on the outside and inside of the membrane in contact with the water. And the hydrophobic regions of these two molecules are found within non-aqueous inner regions of the membrane. So um, the additional evidence supporting the fluid mosaic model is freeze etching. So they took a cell, They um, here's the nucleus, here's the um, probable course of fracture, the knife, um, and the direction of knife movement. So the specimen is rapidly frozen in liquid nitrogen. And number two, here's the mitochondrion nucleus. Spe specimen is fractured with a sharp metal that blade. And then the tissue fractures along planes of membranes, which are weaknesses which often run through membranes. So why is freeze etching especially good to detect membrane proteins when membrane when membrane when membrane is fractured the proteins are either one torn away and leave holes or two stay with the assessment um seen as bumps so it's kind of like when you do those um those pour like strips or whatever and you like get all the stuff out it's either going to leave holes or it's going to um be seen with little bumps 
like here. So it'd be like all your pores coming out on those little things. Okay, so... Mm -mm -mm. Okay, other evidence supporting the fluid mosaic model. Uh, membranes, membrane proteins in different kinds of cells have been tagged using different color fluorescent markers. Some showed that membrane proteins move laterally in very direct in very directed manner, guided, driven by the motor proteins attached to the cytoskeleton. Others never move, anchored by the cytoskeleton. So here's a mouse cell, here's a human cell, um, here's the mixed proteins after one hour. So, current model of cellular membranes is the fluid mosaic model, and a membrane is a mosaic of different proteins embedded into a phospholipid bilayer. So, here we go. Here's a glyclo glycolipid, here's an integral protein, chloroplast, um, here's, another here's a carbohydrate, yes, here's another picture. So, draw and label a plasma membrane. Let's Let's look at this. So, to work properly with active enzymes and appropriate permeability, the, the membrane must be fluid, but as fluid as a solid oil. So, what temperature, um, if you want to learn how to draw these, then definitely watch one of these videos. Oh, I clicked on it. Lovely. <sighs> Brought to you by Ivy Guides. So basically, um, I'm just going to pause this really scroll to the end of this video, and essentially you're just going to want it to have these hydrophilic heads, these hydrophobic tails, and then you're going to want to put these integral proteins in it, or some peripheral proteins, and then put a glycoprotein, um, make sure you add this carbohydrate group, and yeah, that's basically it. We've been doing a lot of transitions in this one, but um... So, what influences this membrane fluidity, temperature, as temperature is cool, phospholipids and membrane proteins do not move fast and tend to become more densely packed together, losing much of their fluidity, fluidity, phospholipid composition, membranes rich in unsaturated fatty acids are more fluid than those dominated by saturated fatty acids because the kinks in the unsaturated fatty acid tails prevent um, tight packing. Some species, examples, temperate fish, winter wheat, have adaptations that allow their cells to change composition of their m membranes in the winter. So fluid, so the unsaturated hydrocarbon tails with kinks, and then the vi um, viscous is saturated carbon hydrocarbon tails. So membrane, and then cholesterol is a, um, a lipid is wedged between phospholipid molecules in the plasma membrane of the animal cells. So when you're drawing it, make sure just to put some in there. Um, at warm temperatures, cholesterol limits the movement of phospholipid, phospholipids and reduces fluidity. And at cold temperatures, it maintains fluidity by preventing tight packing. I mean, wait. yeah. And so membranes have distinctive outside and inside faces. So the two layers may differ in lipid composition. The outer layer of the cell membrane has carbohydrates. So here's the Golgi apparatus. This is a vesicle. Here's the rough ER. Um, or is that the smooth ER? Uh, I think it's the smooth ER because there's not a bunch of thingies. And then here's the plasma membrane, cytoplasmic face, extracellular face, and then um, here's like an image of what's happening. Most of the membrane's permeability is determined by the types of proteins, the types and numbers of proteins. So the plasma membrane and membranes of the various organelles each have unique collections of proteins. And there are two types of proteins. Peripheral proteins, also called extrinsic proteins, are not embedded into the lipid bilayer. They are loosely bonded to the surface of the protein of the membrane and often connected to the integral protein, mem integral membrane protein. So if you guys remember in that um, phospholipid um, diagram, it was just sitting on the top. And then integral proteins, sometimes called intrinsic um, proteins, in penetrate the hydrophobic core of the lipid bilayer, often completely spanning the membrane wherein where they contact the when they when they contact the core when they contact the core they have hydrophobic regions with nonpolar amino acids often coiled into alpha um, helices and then when they're in contact in the with the aqueous environment they have hydrophobic hydrophilic regions of amino acids so here's some functions of membrane proteins they um transport so channels for passive transport they have enzymatic activity um signal transduction so hormone binding sites um intercellular joining cell to cell recognition and attachment to the cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix <laughs> Here's some ex intercellular joining. Exposed regions of membrane glycoproteins bind to each other, causing um, cells to adhere. Intercellular joining um, has tight junctions and desmo desmosomes and are complexes of membrane proteins. So here's some stuff happening. 
And then cell to cell recognition, the ability to of a cell to distinguish one type of neighboring cell from another, important in cell sorting and organization as tissues and organs um, and development, also the basis for rejection of foreign cells by the immune system. Um, cells recognize each other by the surface molecules on the plasma membrane, usually glycolipids and glycoproteins, which vary among species, individuals, and cell types. Um, example for the four human blood groups A, B, A, B, and O differ in external carbohydrates and red blood cells. So, um, the quiz is going to be, well, <laughs> the quiz will be on topics 1.3 1.5, so the structure of cell membranes and the origin of cells. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Um, for now, catch you later. Bye.